Hey everyone, this is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. In this video, I'm going to share some music production tips and techniques while recreating the beat you can hear in Galeucci's Telepathia. So let's check out the end result. Now my goal throughout this video is not necessarily to find the exact patch, preset, or sound used in the original reference, but more so train our ears to sound design and craft the sounds that we're looking for so we get in the general ballpark. That way we're able to recreate those type of sounds in our own DAWs using the plugins that we have available. So let's focus in on the drums. When I hear the drums, I get this nice vintage warm type of vibe from them. So I'm gonna head over to using XLN Audio's Addictive Drums 2. I wanna start with using an acoustic drum kit, and then later on, we'll layer it with our own samples to beef up the overall sound. So here I have XLN Audio's Addictive Drums 2, and we're gonna use the Vintage Dry Drum Kit. I'm using the very first preset here, and let's focus in on our pattern. So I'm gonna just double click this clip slot here, and let's check out what we have. Now, at first glance, pretty straightforward, but it's a little too stiff. So to get more of that realistic vibe, let's go in here and add some life to that. And we can do that just by actually nudging a couple sounds, uh, a couple of the, the hits just slightly off the grid. So I'll come over to this kick drum here and just holding my command key on my computer keyboard and nudge it off grid like that. And I could do the same thing here and move that one over just slightly. Now I can just grab all of them and do that. So we can just slightly kind of move things over a little bit. And that'll give just more of a laid back feel to it. That way it's not stiff and robotic and perfectly in time. It has more of that uh, laid back feel so that it's just a little behind the time and I can accent certain hits more than the other. So we'll leave that there. And then what I want to do is just give this a little bit of grit. So let's head over to our audio effects folder and head over to drive and color and use our overdrive plugin. I love using this plugin, especially on acoustic drum kits because it just brings it to life. Lowering the tone will make it warmer and bring, bringing it up will make it brighter. All right, now let's use our compressor here. I'm gonna grab Ableton Live Stock Compressor. I'm gonna use this to really control some of the transients and kind of glue this drum kit together. So we're gonna really exaggerate this compression. So I'm gonna start with the ratio somewhere around six to one. We'll leave it right up there and then bring the threshold down. And I'm focusing my attention on that snare drum. I wanna bring the threshold down to I hear the snare drum have that like the initial attack or the transient of that snare drum tucked away and more of the body is present. And then I'm gonna move the attack up and keep the release really short. And what I'm gonna do is just dial back the dry and wet. And then bring up the output game. All right, and then we'll just use our EQ. I'm gonna use an EQ8 and just kind of take up some of that lower end and warm this up just a little bit by taking some of the high end out. Great. Now that is kind of like my background layer. Now let's add our foreground layer. So I'm gonna use a drum rack loaded with some samples to kind of beef up this overall pattern. So I've got a drum rack here loaded with a kick drum, hi-hat, and snare. I'm kind of going for a nice beefy bottom end kick. And that snare, 
similar, kind of like an old school hip hop sampled snare and just a crispy hi-hat. And what I'm gonna do is just hold my option key down, drag that right over to my drum rack. We're just taking the same exact pattern and we're gonna go ahead and play them together. You notice you don't hear anything because we actually now have to match the rhythmic pattern here that we created for the acoustic drum kit over to where the samples are being layered or triggered. So I'll move this kick drum pattern over to where it says kick. I'll move the snare to the snare drum and I'll move this over to the hi-hat. Now I can hit fold so it just focuses on those instruments. this over here. And see if I now can balance using my volume just to kind of bring this down. So without the acoustic drum kit, this is what we get. And with just the acoustic drum kit, both together, so cool to have those two layered together because they create a unique um, texture all around. So the acoustic drum kit adds that nice air and the nuances and the drum rack are going to add the overall punch and brings that the, the beat forward. So let's group these two here. I'm going to hit command G and we're going to just kind of glue them now together with a little bit of processing. I'm going to start with just a little bit of EQing. Maybe just warm this up just a little bit more. And I'm gonna head over to my drive and color and use our drum bus plugin. What a great fundamental plugin to just add some saturation, some crunch, and some lower end harmonics. So if you're following along and you're using Logic, Fruity Loops, or any other DAW, uh, check out the channel uh, in my video where I show you how to recreate this drum bus plugin using any of the DAW plugins that you might have on hand. But essentially what we're doing is we're adding some drive, some saturation and some mid-frequency crunch, so a little bit of like overdrive. And using the onboard transit designer to kind of just bring back some of the transients. And we're gonna use some of this boom, which is some lower end subharmonic frequencies to just beef up that low end. And I'm gonna dial the dry and wet from 100 And this, this, the, the decay here is going to determine how long that, that lower end that we're adding um, gets to ring out. All right, cool. Now let's add some compression. And for this, I'm going to go and use the glue compressor. And what we're trying to do is just do a little bit of compression here. Almost what I'm looking for is when I listen to the reference, it almost feels like the kick drum kind of kind of hits the, the overall drums in the gut and it just kind of ducks a little bit. So that's what I'm looking for here. And that's why I'm pulling the threshold back. I'm gonna have a slow attack and a, um, somewhat of a you know quick release, quick to medium release here. And then, to add the overall like tone or texture to this, we're gonna use the Exxon Audio RC20 right on over the drums. But I'm gonna pull the magnitude, which is somewhat like the dry and wet. Let's bring that. All right, now let's focus on those stabs that we can hear throughout the record. So I'm gonna be using Ableton Live's wavetable for this, and you could follow along using any two or more oscillator synth that you might have in your DAW. Now, when I listen to the reference, it's got a little bit of a swell to the stabs, so it's got this womp, 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 almost have a brassy texture too, right? So it's a little bit bright. So I might wanna start with 
using a sawtooth. All right, I'm going to set oscillator one here to sawtooth. And what I'm going to do is lower the frequency because I know off the bat it might be way too bright. So just by listening to it, Yeah, so it's too bright. What we need to do is create some kind of swell so it has a slower attack. Now we can do that by moving the amp envelope a little bit. But what we really wanna do is control the frequency envelope. So I'm gonna go to my matrix here and I'm gonna hit frequency, the cutoff frequency there. And we're gonna assign that to envelope two. And we're gonna be really drastic here. So we'll probably start at 61. And now let's bring the frequency knob down Now we got to go to envelope two and be able to control how fast that's going to open up. So heading over here, let's bring this down right about here. Let's try and see what this sounds like. And just controlling the decay, let's, we'll bring that down a little bit, bring the release down, just kind of shaping this to where we find a nice sweet spot. That's sounding pretty good. We can go back to this amp envelope right here and bring that out. And we're going to stay on polyphonic because we are playing the chords. Maybe add a little bit of resonance. Now let's go to our second oscillator, turn that one on, and also choose Sawtooth for that. And we're going to detune this. And I definitely want to get more of a lower register of texture. So let's go negative 12 semitones. So this is gonna be pitched down. You might need to do the same thing for the first oscillator. Let's put both oscillators a whole octave lower, negative 12 semitones. Yeah, that's much better. And let's start detuning each oscillator from one another. So I'll put this one here at, um, let's go oscillator one and maybe detune that just a little bit, maybe 15 cents and just increase the detuning on the second one. All right, and maybe bring this down a little bit, adding some filter drive. Go over here, add some drive to that. So then I can lower the sustain on the amp. Now, what's really gonna help make this give that nice uh, tone that we're looking for is adding some of the voicing here. So I'm gonna go and increase the amount of voices for the unison, and let's just go ahead and play around with that. So the attack's still a little bit too much. All right, that sounds pretty good there. Next, let's go ahead and add some processing to really give this the atmosphere and the texture that we're looking for. So let's gritty this up. So let's start with using our saturator. We add some saturation to this. And we go from analog clip to medium curve. It's gonna be really noticeable and then we'll crank up some drive. And bring the output down and the dry and wet as well. Now, after that, I'm gonna add a little bit of erosion on here. This is gonna add some cool noise to the saturation. And then what we'll do is add some delay. So let's get over to our delay plugin, go to the echo. And here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it at every eighth note, change it to ping pong. So we've got that nice uh, bounce from left to right happening. What I want to do is kind of change the timing here a little bit on this one. And lower the feedback so it's not repeating too much. And bring up the reverb 
And what's cool about the echo plugin here is I can add the reverb to the post delay signal. And I like that because it's going to add some space to it. All right. And now let's go ahead after that. Why don't we add some reverb? This is going to help create some of the atmosphere and send, uh, add some nice lushness to the sound. And let's go into our pitch and modulation. And what I want to do here is let's go to our flange. It comes with this uh, phaser, flanger, and a doubler option. And you can get a really cool effect with this. So let's go ahead and mess around with it. So going back to that vintage vibe, I am thinking of an electric bass. So I'm going to go and use my IK Multimedia Moto Bass plugin. I'm going to choose the uh, the violin bass preset, just more of like a Hofner bass. And I'm going to go in here and leave it on finger and bring up the muting a little bit. And so what we have is this initial bass line. Now, what I want to do is also layer this bass with more of a subharmonic bass. And I'm going to show you how I do that now. So first, let's listen to our first layer bass line. And also, we do want to make sure that we're focusing on the velocity uh, on bass line as well, because it does play a big role. So these two notes here are too stiff. So bring this down and let's... And maybe just lengthen one, keep this one shorter, like that. See, those little nuances go such a long way. Um, that's how you really make it a little bit more lifelike. All right, now that we've got this first bass, let's add some distortion to that. So I'm going to head over to my drive and color. Now, the reason why I'm adding distortion is because I want this to pop out. And since I'm going to layer this with a deeper, subbier bass, I want this one to be more of the low, mid, and or maybe even just a mid range. So this is going to help have the bass line cut through a little bit, even on your phone or laptop speaker. So we'll head to use our pedal or any overdrive. And then use an EQ plugin to just shave off the low end. And we also want to warm this up. We don't want too much of that presence going through. All right. And so then what we can do is just simply layer this with a, a synth. And so in this case, we'll just choose the wavetable here. I'll copy the baseline right over to that. Let's solo this. And I need to switch from polyphonic to monophonic. And we'll leave it at the sine wave and just bring the release down just a little bit. And transpose the whole thing down an octave. Now we can say, all right, that's cool. Let's call it a day. But we want some really nice, hefty bass coming from that. So I'm going to go to my audio effects, drive and color, and use my amp simulator. And we're going to go switch over to either lead or the bass model. And then what I'll do is use my EQ to shave off some of the higher end. Use this one off here and just focus on the lower subharmonic frequencies. Now layer that with the other bass. All right, and now let's put it all together. So it's a little too much distortion here. I might switch the overdrive and bring a little bit of this down. See, 
without the first layer bass, it'll be all sub and that's fine. But when you add this, it kind of helps cut through the low mid section. All right, now let's go ahead and lay down the pads that are more of like a call and response to the stabs that we hear. So once again, let's use our wavetable here, I'm going for like a nice, cool, mellow type of pad. So I won't be leaning towards the sawtooth because that'll be too bright. Or the square. So we're going to combine the sine wave and the triangle together. So let's start with our sine wave here. All right, and now let's go turn our second oscillator on here and put this a whole octave higher and put this to our triangle. And detuning these, uh, both oscillators. All right, just extending the release a little bit, putting the amp uh, just a little bit ahead and increasing the sustain. Let's add some movement by clicking on our LFO, getting to our matrix. And we want to assign the LFO to our oscillator one pitch. I mean, oscillator two pitch. So we'll go to oscillator two and assign that to our LFO. Go back to the LFO and just control how much it's oscillating that pitch. So let's bring the amount down. That automatically that gives that nice, cool, vintage VHS type of vibe. Not too much. And let's use some unison here. Might want to select the noise one. Let's just layer a RC retro color on there. We'll take the noise off and distort this and give it some reverb here. So I'll use the spade. Let's go back to our amp envelope and maybe swell that up a little bit. All right, now let's go ahead and layer those pads with some nice roads. So I'm going to use Excellent Audio's Addictive Keys, drag and drop that into the session view, and let's choose the Mark 1 patch. And I'm going to hold my Option key to drag and copy that same pads that we have over to the roads and hit play. Now, one thing I like to do, uh, especially with roads, is to add more of a strum effect when playing the chords. This is especially helpful with electric keys. And so when you have chords and they're starting somewhat really close to one another, the notes, it just becomes a little stiff, right? So if all the notes were lined up here. So what I like to do is give it a little bit of strum by just having each of the notes just a little behind each other and you get a different type of feel you get a different type of vibe to it. So you hear that bling, it's a nice strum. And that's what I want to kind of get across here. So let's do this again, not too much. And that really helps accent the chords. And it adds more of the characteristics of, of a Rhodes and it adds that vibe. So I'll do the same thing here. Just accent. I always like to have the bass note land first and then just nudge the other ones slightly behind that one. These are the small details that go into the production feeling like, wow, okay, it's not so stiff and not so robotic. And that's how you add a lot of the humanistic element to these uh, performances. So now let's listen to this with everybody else. So I noticed that the chords are just lingering a little bit too short so we'll just extend it highlighting everybody and now here we go all 
All right, now let's just glue all this together using that nice string that's kind of uh, adding that nice glaze on top of everything. And for this, I'm gonna be using the Selena V2 from Arturia. And let's go ahead and just listen to that. Same note, just a octave higher. And let's go ahead and see what it sounds like with everyone all together. Hey there, so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it encouraging, inspiring, and helpful in any way. As my gift to you for watching this video and for taking the time to watch it all the way to the end, I want to send you a sample pack loaded with construction kits, loops, one shots, transition effects, and it's yours absolutely free, as well as the session that we just went through in this video. You can click the link below in the description box or visit beatacademy.com to download this sample pack and the session files for from this video. They're absolutely free and the sample pack is 100% royalty free. So you can use it in your music, whichever DAW you're using and share that music with the rest of the world. Also, if you're serious about wanting to produce your own music and you're looking for the professional guidance to help you take your next step with your music production, then I wanna encourage you to visit beatacademy.com to take advantage of all the resources, the mentorship access, the community, and so much more that'll help you achieve your music production goals. Visit beatacademy.com for more information. Be sure to like this video and subscribe so that YouTube will keep you up to date with many more videos that are coming down the road. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.